Dr. Will. Uh, good morning, everybody. You are listening to The Voice. Uh, come on, dig me now. One and only Steve Harvey got a radio show. Yeah, I got one. Uh, and I, I got a message for you today, too, something I was thinking about that might help you along the way. Um, the thing I appreciate about so many uh, people that I learned from, Bishop Jakes, uh, Kenneth Olmer, uh, Donnie McClurkin, Kirk Franklin, um, uh, Joel Osteen. I, I, I can't tell you. And, 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 and many more than that. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm naming, you know, famous people cause I, cause I know you know these names, but my father who you never met was so great in my development as a man, but my mother, Lord have mercy, my mother was, um, she taught me about faith. She gave me the things I needed to know about what I speak about every day. That basis was given to me by her. So, so many great people. But here's, here's, here's the thing that I've had to learn. And that is that if God got you through it, it's done. Move on. See, I, I can't tell you how many people don't really pay attention to that close enough. If God got you through it, it's done. Move on. How many times have we as people allowed God to get us through something, get us beyond something, get us over something, get us through something, and then even after its completion, we sit there and we dwell on it and we dwell on it to the point where it becomes an anchor around our neck and we can't move on. We can't move on because we just won't let it go. It's done. If God got you through it, it's done. Move on. Stop harboring on the past. Stop hanging on to every time you fail. Stop hanging on to every time you slipped up and messed up. Stop hanging on to every time you didn't get it right. So what? Everybody makes mistakes. Everybody messes up. Everybody don't get it right. Everybody struggling with something. You ain't the only one. But my God, man, if God got you through it, it's done. Move on you hanging on to it for that's why he got it got you through it so you can move on from it see a lot of things that happen to us that we think are negative or or bad experience these are lessons in what in what not to do this is a this uh this is a this is a, a, a a way to have a now a bearing or look out for it the next time you know you 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 got me once, you can't get me again. I'm telling you, man, if God got you through it, it's done, move on. You have got to move on. I use this analogy all the time. I'm going to add a little bit to it. Bishop Jakes told me you cannot drive your car looking in the rear view mirror. I was talking to a young singer yesterday who I ran up into. And man, let me tell you something. This, this, this analogy, oh, I told him we had about 20 minute conversation. on. See, you know what your rear view mirror is actually for in your car? I was just tripping on this one day. Actually, your rear view mirror is designed. And this is what I use it for. After I pass a car, and I want to merge into that lane or I want to make another move. I look up in the rear view mirror and all I use it for, it shows me that I've gotten past it. I've gotten past the vehicle I was passing and I got enough room now clear to make my next move. That's what I use my rear view mirror for. I use my rear view mirror to just glance up every now and then to see what's coming up on me. That's all I use it for. The rear view mirror, when you're passing through something, 
Listen to me real close now. Your rear view mirror on your car is after you passing something or you're passing by something, you can look up in the rear view mirror and it lets you know you passed it. You're beyond it. It's clear now. It's in the past. You no longer have to deal with it as the car that was in front of you blocking your way. You have passed it. You look up in the mirror. You've cleared it. Now, if you want to switch lanes, you could slide on over. You got room. But that rearview mirror also lets you see if anything is coming up on you. And you just need to glance because if you're moving forward, Ain't a whole lot can come up on you. You just glancing every now and then, and it reminds you that you got through something and you got beyond something. That's what the rear view mirror for. Now let's talk about that windshield. Why you think that windshield so big on your car? That's the biggest window on your car. You know why the windshield so big? Cause it's where you're going. Because even the automobile makers want you to have a wide view of where you're going. So you can see what's up ahead. They put lights on the car at night so you can have night vision and see what's up ahead. But you can, uh, uh, uh-oh, man, uh uh-oh. See, now, why is that? Look, think about that now before I move forward with this one. Think about that windshield, man. Why is that windshield so big? So you can see where you're going. It's way more important where you're going than where you've been. Don't you see that? That's why the rear view mirror is so small, because it is nowhere near as important as it is as to where you're going. Where you've been just allows you to take a glance so you can make sure you cleared it, so you can see if there's room enough for you to make your next move, so you can know that you've gone through it and go ahead on about your business. But that windshield, that windshield is for vision. A man without a dream or vision shall perish. That windshield is for somebody going somewhere. That windshield is for somebody up there trying to make another move. I'm going to go right. I'm going to left. I'm going to get off on this exit. I'm going to take this detour. I'm going to handle this sign. There's a new route. There's only so many miles left to go. That's what the windshield got. Let me tell you something, man. When you see a mile sign, you're driving on the freeway, you're on the interstate, and you let's say you're driving to a particular city, and you see a sign that says that city is 38, uh, 138 miles away. That lets you know where you're going and you're on the right path. Now, if you keep looking in the rearview mirror, you'll never know how close you are. You'll never know because you're driving your car, looking in the rearview mirror. You all on the shoulder. You hear them rocks up under your car. You done scared yourself to death because you know why? Because you keep looking in the rearview mirror. Get out the rearview mirror. If God got you through it, it's done. Move on. So what he, so what he don't love you no more. And man, let's move on. If God got you through it, it's done. Move on. God got something for you. If you get out your rearview mirror and get up in that windshield, God's got something for you up ahead. But you can't see what's up ahead because you in that rearview mirror. If God got you through it, it's done. Let's move on. Come on, y'all. Don't let the past beat you up. That's the ingredients in the cake. You done made that already. That's done. Let's go. God, look in the windshield. See what God probably got something new for you. If you get out the rearview mirror and look, open up your eyes and see. All right, let's go today. Hi, I'm David Eagleman. I have a new podcast called Inner Cosmos on iHeart. I'm going to explore the relationship between our brains and our experiences by tackling unusual questions like, can we create new senses for humans? So join me weekly to uncover how your brain steers your behavior, your perception, and your reality. Listen to Inner Cosmos with David Eagleman on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Last season, millions tuned into the Betrayal podcast to hear a shocking story of deception. I'm Andrea Gunning, and now we're sharing an all-new story of betrayal. Ashley Litton was helping her husband set up a business Venmo account when she discovered a terrible secret. I saw a hidden folder, and I opened it. What the hell did I just see? Listen to season two of Betrayal on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. 
Between April 1971 and September 1972, six young black girls were snatched off the streets in Washington, D.C. This child was uh, laying on the side of the road. The person said, I murdered your daughter. The killer believed that he may have been seen. I will admit the others when you catch me if you can. Signed, Freeway Phantom. Listen to Freeway Phantom on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.